Imagine losing an entire football field. Not in a month, not in a week, but every 34 minutes. That's what's happening to America's coastline. And if you zoom in on the map, one state stands out like ground, slipping beneath your feet. Louisiana. Now, here's a bizarre twist. The secret weapon in this fight isn't some multi-billion dollar wall or high-tech barrier. It's oyster shells. Yes, the same leftovers from your seafood dinner are now being used to rebuild lost land, slow down deadly erosion, and even clean our oceans. Sound unbelievable? It's already working, and volunteers are hauling thousands of tons of discarded shells from restaurants straight into the Gulf. Louisiana has already lost a landmass the size of Delaware, just gone, washed away. And projections say the state could lose the same amount all over again in just 50 years. That means more billion-dollar disasters, more displaced communities, and even greater environmental fallout. But here's where it gets wild. What if oysters could not only stop this, but reverse it? You're about to see how trash becomes treasure, how food waste becomes infrastructure, and how nature might just save itself if we let it. Let's dive into the unexpected solution to one of America's most pressing climate battles, and why you might be eating part of the answer. The problem, a coast that's disappearing fast. Let's start with the basics. Louisiana is being eaten alive by water. Since the 1930s, it's lost over 1,900 square miles of land. That's not erosion, that's obliteration. And the cause, it's complicated. On one side, you've got oil and gas development, which carved thousands of canals and pipelines through fragile wetlands. These channels act like open wounds, letting salt water pour in, killing freshwater vegetation that once held soil in place. Then there's the damming of rivers upstream, which starves the coast of essential sediment. That natural flow used to deliver the very mud and minerals that kept barrier islands and wetlands alive. Add rising sea levels and stronger storms on top, and you've got a coast with no backup plan. Places like Port Fourchon have shrunk drastically. Terrebonne Parish is losing up to 6,400 acres a year, the equivalent of over 2,500 football fields disappearing annually. And barrier islands, some have lost 77% of their land mass since the 1800s. The human cost, a culture drowning, the numbers are staggering, but the human stories hit harder. Indigenous communities like the Atacapa Ishak Chawasha tribe used to walk, farm, and live on solid ground. Today, their villages are only accessible by boat. Their homes, surrounded by water, their land, gone. From fishermen to families, Louisiana's people are watching their legacy vanish tide by tide. And with it, the costs rise, literally. By 2023, the economic damage is projected to hit $11 billion, factoring in infrastructure loss and business disruption. The strange solution, oysters. Now here's where things take a turn. In 2014, Louisiana's restaurants and environmental groups started asking a wild question. What if we stopped throwing away oyster shells? Enter the Coalition to Restore Coastal Louisiana, CRCL a group that collects discarded oyster shells from restaurants in places like New Orleans, cleans them, dries them, bags them, and sends them back into the Gulf. Why? Because oyster shells, when piled along the coast, become natural wave barriers. Instead of concrete walls that crack and crumble, these biological buffers absorb wave energy, reduce erosion, and, get this, grow over time. How oyster barriers work. Picture this. Waves rushing toward the coast are like punches. Uh, when they hit a shoreline, they break it down. But when they hit oyster shell piles, the force breaks first. The shells slow wave speed, reducing their power before they reach land. This means less erosion, more stability, and a chance for vegetation to regrow behind the reef, which further protects the coast with its roots. And, and it's not theory, and you know, it's proven. Hani CRCL's data shows that erosion drops by up to 50% in areas protected by oyster reefs. Other studies show that reefs reduce shoreline retreat by four times compared to unprotected zones. In one case, unprotected areas lost 8 to 12 inches of shoreline per year. 
protected zones just four inches or less. The regenerative twist, nature repairs itself. Here's where it gets even better. Oyster reefs are self-repairing. When baby oysters, called spat, are born, they float around searching for the perfect place to live. And what do they love most? Oyster shells. Yep, they're drawn to their own kind. So when CRCL dumps cleaned shells into the water, they're essentially building a nursery for new oysters. Over time, these new oysters attach, grow, and expand the reef, making the barrier stronger, taller, and even more effective against erosion. It's the rare kind of infrastructure that builds itself, grows stronger with time, and doesn't require concrete or endless maintenance. From trash to treasure. To date, CRCL has collected over 7,000 tons of oyster shells. In 2016, they built a reef using 868 tons in St. Bernard Parish. By 2020, that reef supported over 42 live oysters per 10 square feet, a record. In 2020, they sent 800 tons to Jefferson Parish, one of the worst erosion zones. Not only did shoreline retreats slow down, but live oysters began populating the area. In 2021, they confirmed a new generation of oysters spawning. The success isn't just environmental, it's economic. Every ton of shells recycled saves landfill space, supports oyster industries, and avoids the pollution that comes from dumping shell waste, cleaning more than just shorelines. Oysters don't just stop waves, they clean water. One adult oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water per day, removing algae, excess nitrogen, and other pollutants. When you have thousands of oysters packed into a reef, you've basically built a massive natural filtration system. They even help fight the Gulf of Mexico's dead zone, a 6,500 square mile area with almost no oxygen due to nutrient runoff. Oysters trap nitrogen and phosphorus, reducing the fuel for algal blooms that create dead zones. Even better, their shells host bacteria that remove nitrates from water, a process called denitrification. It's a double whammy of purification, all from shells that would otherwise rot in the trash. Boosting biodiversity. Oyster reefs are more than barriers. They're underwater cities. Their complex structure offers shelter to baby fish, shrimp, crabs, and dozens of other marine species. More hiding spots mean more survival. More survival means more predators. And so entire food chains form around these reefs. For coastal Louisiana, that means more seafood, healthier ecosystems, and stronger livelihoods. Just ask the Atacapa Ishak Chawasha, two years after receiving a reef, their waters saw a surge in aquatic life. And it's not just fish. Birds, amphibians, and mammals benefit too. So let's bring this home America is losing its coast, fast. Louisiana is on the front lines, with nearly 2,000 square miles already vanished and billions of dollars hanging in the balance. It's an ecological emergency and a cultural one too. The causes are complex, oil drilling, dams, climate change, and neglect. The effects are devastating. Lost homes, lost species, and even lost history. But in the face of all that, a simple, scalable, sustainable solution is working. Oyster shells. These humble leftovers are protecting coastlines from wave erosion, filtering pollutants out of the water, providing habitat for marine life, reducing landfill waste, growing themselves into stronger barriers. What started as restaurant waste is now saving Louisiana's shores, and it's powered not by billion-dollar corporations, but by volunteers, chefs, scientists, and everyday people who decided to stop wasting shells and start building hope 